Welcome back. This is Rick at Ralph, and today we will start our series on the opening theory of Metamaki. Now, before we get into actual openings, I would like to explain the starting position of Metamaki and a little bit of the phonetic moves. Uh, this will help us understand the opening theory a little bit better because these are critical moments in the game where you have to make critical decisions and you don't want to make the wrong one. So the first thing we'll work on is the actual starting position of the royal pieces. And for the most part it's more or less going to play out the same. But the big, the main difference is whether or not you have a high king or a low king. Now when you have a high king, you generally don't want to expand your center too much and um, it's kind of the bishops can get kind of annoying because of the fact they are always in perfect position to attack so like right from the beginning you'll have problems for instance in this position you would like to just develop in the center and get things going but this annoying bishop check comes in and this is not really a spot you would want your pawn to be I mean it's not the worst concession in the world but it's not going to help your castling position too much and you'll probably be vulnerable to a lion later and to make it worse in this particular position the eagle is being x-rayed as you do not want to trade a bishop for an eagle, that's just a horrible, horrible trade. So this is one of the reasons we try to hold back our center pawns around the king. Usually you, that in that variation you can actually get away with this little concession, but if you were to start expanding these pawns right here, then you're going to have a very open king position, the queen can swoop in. Um, I mean, if they get the camels, then it gets really dangerous. Um, now, as for the lion, the lion does really good when he's high. Um, the eagle and the king are generally the ones you want to keep low because when the eagle is high, he has this weak spot in front of him, and that also discourages the movement of the center pawns. You really would like to have center pawn movement. Now, keep in mind that whatever positional weaknesses are inflicted on you are also inflicted on black but since white had the initiative black has a lot less to prove in the position so it might be advantageous for him to choose a high king position in order to disrupt an aggressive player's assault but um, that's the main difference um, when you have a high queen I won't get into this too much just yet but it actually helps defend against a certain annoying threat with the camel and that's why high queens are really good you only get this benefit on one side of the board usually it's better to have it over here because this is more likely to get hit by this little camel tactic i'm talking about and that's pretty much about it we'll go to my favorite position just because it's good for instruction and that's this. We have a high lion, high queen, low king, low eagle. Pretty much ideal position. Um, it really doesn't matter what side these are on. I just prefer it this way because I'd rather get pinned straight up with my lion, I guess, than the queen. But uh, the first opening I'll be showing you is the camel opening. And the reason I show this first is because the camels are something you got to learn about right away in Metamac because if you don't know what the candles are capable of they get pretty dangerous so first of all this already could be considered a positional mistake trying to mirror the camel and the reason is that first of all if you go here um, this camel is threatening let me just make a nothing move and show you this camel is threatening these two squares and once it reaches there there'll be forking one of these piece combinations here. So the only way to stop this threat directly is to go right here and this move does not complement your position very well mostly because it blocks in your bishop 
it kind of weighs the pawn tempo, but that might might not matter depending on the position. <coughs> and it's just kind of a waste of time. And make it worse, you will not be able to reciprocate this threat because white will move this pawn and this camel will not have an attack after this move right here with the prince and as you see he can't get through because of this bishop and this pawn is guarded so the camel has ran out of steam already so what ends up happening is now if the camel is on the same color as the king this is what makes copying dangerous and the reason is because the camel can go here and if you attempt to copy him he will go here, you he will go here, and I mean they don't even have to do this. The idea is basically to force black into a desperado maneuver, and if you're not familiar with that term, it's where both pieces are just on a war path, and if either one gives up, excuse me, if the one that's on the, the second move gives up, then they'll lose material. And what makes this frustrating, now normally you can keep, as long as you go for the best piece that you can attack, you can keep this camel dancing all day long. But I prefer the direct approach here because uh, you don't get as much of a sting with it the other way because you only go up a knight for a camel. And this line is shorter and it's a bishop for a camel. It leaves more pieces on the board and gives you more winning options. And then from here he'll be threatening your bishop or he might have even gone for your prince either way you just move the piece out of the way and then you're in a pretty decent position he might try black that is might try to like come in for another hit right here but usually there'll be a decent way to stop it and you're just winning your material now so the next thing I would like to show you is if the camel goes wide over here this is actually kind of tricky and the idea here is that the camel wants to come let me just copy the move just for a fact wants to come here and attack these two spots and force you to make this concession and honestly um unless you have a high queen pointing right here and this is where the high queen becomes useful if you don't have the high queen you actually have to take this concession but if you have a high queen and your opponent goes here since you have this diagonal cut off in this position you can develop normally but uh, somebody a smart player would realize that there's no high queen on this side and would attempt this maneuver on the other side of the board and then there's not really much you can do about it. They're going to go there no matter what. And really there's just not too many ways you want to defend it. If you put the bishop in the way, then your prince won't get out. If you try to bring your lion out, you'll have positional problems later in the game. And it's just ugly. So the best thing is just take the concession. And... Um, make white waste his moves and eventually you'll take over the center and your game will be just fine this pawn will start rolling and everything will be really nice so just restart and I'll, I'm just going to show a standard maneuver this is going to be the end of the video after this this is called a bishop swing and I really want to sh highlight this because uh it's a pretty nice maneuver. I'm going to get more in depth with it in the next video when I show the first opening. And the idea of a bishop swing is bishops are hard to develop. And uh, the bishop swing gives you a nice position for at least one of your bishops. And um, you have to do this quickly because black will sometimes have a way to stop you from performing the swing. You really want to perform the swing on the same side as your king because it just goes with um, the opening. I'm going to be showing you what's called the two bishops opening. I'm just naming, naming the openings practically. But um, yeah, this swing is very important. And then this is where I'll show the last knight, the camel trap, which is the camel attack right here. Since you have the queen, as I said, the high queen, you don't have to defend, but normally you just bring this pawn up. 
Anyways, that's the end of my video. I hope you enjoy 